Jimmy is six years old. He's just gotten home from school and he wants to play a scratch game. He opens up scratch. Hmm, this one here looks like lots of fun. But little does Jimmy know, his life is about to be changed. Oh, this was no ordinary game Jimmy had clicked on. This was bad. Jimmy spanned the wheel. <gasps> a jackpot? Again, again. A warm, fuzzy feeling overcame Jimmy. He knew he shouldn't be doing this, but it was so fun for Jimmy had just been introduced to gambling. Jimmy's mum rushed upstairs. Jimmy, Jimmy, what are you doing? But it was too late. Jimmy, 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 Jimmy! Every game developer wants their game to be fun and addicting. And what is more fun and addicting than gambling? Did you know that 26% of the population gambles? This shocking statistic gave way to an idea. As a developer of scratch games, would it be possible to capitalize on the addictive nature of gambling without the involvement of money? Well, first I needed to gamble for myself. First I needed to gather some intel. If I was to understand how to get Jimmy in that trance-like state, I first needed to understand the problematic evil desires of gambling. I began to investigate the scene and build up a collection of information about what the most popular games are like. And it was here that I discovered Mines. Now the beauty of a game like this is that it was simple to understand. I could easily recreate this game. I could say, it's not your game, it's mine's. And see if it was just as addictive for kids as it was for adults. But wait a second, wait a second, I forgot to tell you how it works. Okay, this is the most boring part. So let's just get through with this in one breath. <gasps> the principles of the game are simple. First, the player needs to select how many mines there are. Then, the player wages a certain amount of value, which could be lost if the player chooses a tile with a bomb on it. But for every tile they choose that is not a bomb, their total profit increases. Each new tile increases the profit an extra amount because the risk gets higher and higher. At any point, the player may cash out with the money they have earned already. But of course, the player feels like they can always earn more. This is where the gambling starts. <sighs> Thanks for sticking with me there. soundtrack is just delightful, but that wasn't very instructional was it? So let me educate you properly on what I did each step of the way. After making the project, I got to work on the visual design, creating the tile system and the iconic gems and bombs. Then I added in some more lighting effects to keep Jimmy invested. <gasps> oh. It was at this point that I approached my first obstacle. Jimmy. You see, Jimmy ain't no ordinary kid. Behind his soft green eyes lies a devious child who loves to break and twist the rules. So I knew I had to make sure that my game couldn't be broken. And here, I anticipated that Jimmy would attempt to enter a bet that's too high, more than the money he owns. I also needed to find a way to communicate this visually for his small developing brain. Uh, uh, that looks good. Now the project was really starting to come together. The interface was looking spectacular and the system all worked perfectly. Now I just had to do some basic maths and calculate the player's profits. Now I'm gonna try and break this down for you like you are Jimmy. And if you get it, just bully everybody else in the comments who doesn't. 
Now as you are already aware, as you continue to flip over tiles, the risk of hitting a bomb gets higher and higher. This means that your profit grows exponentially, and so far this is all simple enough. But things get very complicated when you introduce a change in the amount of bombs there are. I mean, Jimmy's a crazy fella. He's a mad lad. He's got balls. The first thing that he's doing is maxing out those mines. And so, you need to adjust the profits to compensate. Slap that all together in a maths formula and you get a little something like... What do I... How do I even start? What am I... What am I supposed to do now? How do I put that into... I don't know what... what I mean, we've come so far, we've done so much... What, I don't think I can continue. During this particularly difficult time, there was one thing that kept me going, and that was picturing Jimmy at show and tell, telling all of his buddies about my gambling game. Nothing warms the heart more than that. So with a few crackers and the shell of my brain, I got to work. Bang, bang, they said it couldn't be done, but he just went and did it. What's next on the list? Oh, well that ain't happening. The best part about making a project is when there's not much project to make left. It's when the, it's when the project's almost over. It's when, it's when I can finally touch grass. Quote me on that. We finally get to tie up all the loose ends and, and put our game together again. Finish, Fur furnish the game. Finish and furnish. Furnish and finish. Have the game finished. With the full game completed, all that was left to do was the thumbnail. And this was one of the most important steps. If kids didn't click on the project, they'd never get addicted to gambling. And that is our primary mission. So I had to make sure this was- Oh my goodness, look at that! It's beautiful! What should I tell the kids in the instructions? Yep. After releasing the project, it was time to get marketing. And for those of you who have stayed up until this point, you're in for a treat. When it comes to marketing, I spread my projects faster than Jimmy can spread gasoline. Hang on. First step is to dump your project is in as in as in as many places as possible. As you can't use links for your project because it's against the guidelines and rules, you have to add them to studios manually. For those of you who are completely new to Scratch, studios are a way for people to share their projects and gain more traction. And here, there is a few key studios that I add my projects to that gives them a lot of popularity. And I'll make a video on that in the future. But for now, let's see how our project's doing. 100,000? FBI, open up! 